Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar run for the UKV, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days as it is going to be turning quite a bit cooler for all and we are going to start to see more precipitation as we do see those winds veer in from the west. Now of course today we have had an exceptionally hot day or depending on when you're watching this yesterday was an exceptionally hot hot day hottest day of the year officially temperatures peaked at 34.8 degrees in cambridge that is official stat from the met office so pretty much what we expected i did say in yesterday's video and all the videos prior i was thinking 34 degrees was going to be the widespread high with the peak around a 35 maybe a 36 and what we got was around a 35 in the end so we were pretty correct. The reason why maybe it didn't climb slightly higher was because we did see a bit more instability around, more cloud, and we did actually see quite a bit more thunderstorm activity than we thought. Now, we expected it further northwards, and that did occur as expected, but further southwards, we did see a few pop-up heavy thunderstorms in places, and that probably contributed to the temperatures not being quite as high, maybe by only half a degree to a degree, but it does make a difference when we're looking at at these top top temperatures but we'll look at all of that in detail in a few moments time so at the end of the video we'll start to look at the longer range in a bit more detail we haven't touched on that too much in the last couple of days but we'll focus more on the second half of august the final few weeks now of summer so do remember if you enjoy videos which do like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the link's in the description now if you start on the live radar you can see it is a relatively dry evening i'm calling this around 10 p.m on monday you can see a few thunderstorms now exiting out into the north sea they were mainly active through northern ireland scotland and northern england we did see a small line develop from the midland down to central southern england didn't last too long during the afternoon but they did pick up and they were pretty hefty and as i said regardless of the intensity of them they would have allowed a bit of rain a bit of cloud uh, and that would have cooled the temperatures down in those regions the very hot air is now moving away it's still going to probably linger through the, till the early hours of the morning so the humidity won't drop until tomorrow and even then it'll still be high 20s tomorrow in the east uh, but it's really by wednesday we thought as we see the full-blown westerly winds pushing back in and it does turn cooler for all now, if we put on the temperatures this evening, you can see it is still incredibly hot in the east, still touching 30 degrees in some areas, with many more dropping down into the mid to low 20s now. But yeah, it's still very hot. You see much of northern and western Europe. So you can see where the plume of heat is, and it's this kind of area here from Belgium, Netherlands, northern France to eastern England. It is slowly pushing eastwards. So we are starting to move away from its influence. Now, if you go over to NetWeather, we can have a look at the widespread high temperatures today. Again, Cambridge got 34.8 degrees. So again, not uh, every site is included here. And again, this is taking a different Cambridge site or not rounding it, or not using it, sorry, at one decimal place and not rounding it up. So again, these are the rough widespread temperatures. But again, I never take any official stats from here. I'd always go to the Met Office first because you hear widely 32 up towards 34 degrees for many areas and those are max temperatures the latest top 20 you still see many areas are mid to high 20s uh, and really only a short time ago we started to dip below the 30s so still incredibly hot out there and i think the biggest thing that you'll notice is the dew point is still very high still high teens touching 20 degrees towards south end and norwich so the far east of england still very high dew points if we look at the max today you see widely during the early afternoon uh, specifically for much of england we saw exceptionally high dew points because of the very hot humid air that was in place making it feel like we are in the rainforest if anyone's watching this and has been to or been lucky enough to have been to a very tropical country it really did feel tropical out there today luckily it's now moving away but yeah for a time i thought we were down towards uh some of the tropics or down towards the equator in a, in a rainforest you see the humidity as well very high look at 100 percent humidity in places so exceptionally humid hot and oppressive but it's now slowly moving away 
Now, if you have a look at the latest UKV and start on the precipitation, you can see a few thunderstorms clearing away through this evening, but mostly a dry night, but rain starting to push in from the west, and this is the change for many western areas, all into cooler air for tomorrow. But to the east of this weather front, still could be quite hot, and to be honest, in that area of sunshine, wouldn't be surprised to see an isolated 30 degrees in their widely 25 plus. As we move into Wednesday, that rain slowly pushes eastwards, uh, very slowly in eastern areas, but clearing through Wednesday. And then the majority of areas are dry for Wednesday afternoon, but all in fresher air. Same can be said for Thursday, but we start to see heavier rain moving in, especially in the north and west. And then that rain starts to arrive further southwards into the early hours of Friday. Could be pretty miserable indeed for slowly clearing. And we just stay in that westerly flow. Some days where it's decent, sunny, temperatures would respond. Other days, cooler, wetter and windier. Now, if you look at the upper air temperature, you can see the incredibly hot air is now moving away to our east. As I'm recording this, it's just clipping the far east coast, but mostly it's now moving away. And you can see as we head through Tuesday, still hot in the east, but as we head into Wednesday, turning cooler for all. We are going to see another warm air mass there for Thursday into Friday, but it's nowhere near as hot as it has been, and it's going to be associated with some cloud and rain. So it might feel a little bit oppressive on Thursday and Friday, but nowhere near what we've seen over the past 24 hours uh, and eventually clearing away to our east you can also have a look at the dew points look at that low 20s in the east but by tuesday afternoon even though it still could be warm look at those dew points much much lower as we do have slightly drier air moving in uh, you wouldn't expect drier air to be coming in off the atlantic but because of the heat and humidity this air is actually going to be drier than a southerly wind, which is pretty remarkable. If we're being completely honest, you know, we'd always expect air coming from the near continent to be drier, especially in winter, very dry, cold, Atlantic, warm and moist, Re roll reversal here, not because the Atlantic's changed, just because the air mass to our south is so much hotter and so much more humid than we see most of the year. Now do look at the max temperatures, you can see earlier this afternoon, as expected, low 30s quite widely in the east, elsewhere mid to high 20s. As we progress into Tuesday, as I said in the far east, we still could nudge maybe an isolated 30 degrees, but widely 26 to 28, so it's still pretty hot there. As we progress into Wednesday, it could still be warm in a few spots, maybe low 20s, but for most, it is quite a bit cooler. Temperatures into the teens, or maybe touching 20 degrees. Into Friday, temperatures could rise further. Said could be a little bit hot and humid there, 26 or 27, but still widely cooler than it has been. And the same could be said for Friday. Weather front does move through, so we'll be slightly cooler, but still low 20s in many areas. And Saturday, very similar. So trending back towards average, which this time of year is around the low 20s. This sort of low 20s being the average isn't gonna last too much longer. It's kind of the status quo for late June through to kind of late August, early September, but it won't be the status quo in about three or four weeks time. That's when we will start to see the drop off in temperatures and we'll start to see our first step changes, uh, essentially where those temperatures go from being 20 degrees most days to suddenly being 15 degrees most days. And then suddenly we're back into single digits by November, December, uh, when winter starts rolling around. So unfortunately we are on that slow transition to cooler conditions, but still got something that is still got decent levels for the next few weeks at least. And if you look at the longer range, of course, as I said, it's generally warm through August, but we are seeing westerly winds, so it is going to keep it pretty unsettled. The one thing I haven't mentioned so far in the video that we do need to keep an eye on because it is more of a longer range thing, so I didn't want to hype it up too much, is the Atlantic hurricane system. Uh, hurricane season, sorry. Now, I've brought it up a couple of times in passing comments in the past week or two but it is something we do need to keep a close eye on now no signs of anything major here until day seven look at this big system exiting northeast canada now again we'll have to wait and see exactly what this does uh, again maybe we'll have a video on the nhc looking at the national hurricane center seeing what's happening with this system but from what i remember from what i've seen this is this is our again I don't believe it will be a major hurricane and it will stay mostly out in the North Atlantic. I don't actually know what its name is yet or whether it has been named. I think it is still uh, a depression 
as I'm recording this, so it's not got official name yet, but developing quite significantly. And look at day 10, it gets caught up in the jet stream and it spirals in towards us. Now here isn't too intense, but I just wanted to make note of that because we'll see some other runs that does really spin up and it could be very energetic indeed. And out towards 384 hours, kind of keeping that status quo of westerly winds, we could see some southerly injections at times, which could turn it hot briefly. Um, but again, as we progress further towards September, see the temperatures into the mid 30s like we've just seen, it will take something more and more remarkable. Another thing to note is look up towards Greenland. We just go from the first frame to the final frame, look at all the green that does start to develop and these are both midday it's not like one's night and one's middle of the day just showing you winter is coming and the other thing to point out that i haven't spoken about in months really is the stratosphere the polar vortex is starting to form by the end of august as you can see up in the stratosphere it is starting to cool down uh, again Sorry for pointing this out on the hottest day of the year, but winter is coming. Now do look at the GM, again a westy flow over the coming days, um, keeping it pretty unsettled and cooler, but nothing too cold. We're going to see some warmer bursts in there. Again, look at day 10, that X hurricane tropical system moving out of the Atlantic and really spiring up to our south. At day 10, doesn't look too intense, down towards kind of 980 millibars or so, probably towards the centre of that system, so deep and it's got some pretty hot air wrapped in it, but nothing too extreme. But contrast that Stellatus ECMWF. Westy winds, nothing too abnormal yet. And then we see that system exiting out of Northeast Canada by day seven, very similar to the other runs. Oh, sorry, skip through uh, there. Following day, out in the Atlantic, doesn't lose its intensity though by day eight, day nine. And look at that, really spins up to our west into a pretty severe system, pushing up some exceptionally hot air. Um, and yeah, that would be extreme. Look at those uh, winds. And I said, look at those temperatures as well. We would be bringing up balmy southerly winds. Look at the pressure, 956. That would be exceptionally deep in the middle of winter, let alone the middle of summer. Temperatures said would be pretty warm and humid with those very warm upper air temperatures. But we would most likely, with that added moisture, see exceptionally heavy rain. Exceptional rainfall rates here. Almost off the charts. Dark purple that is off the charts. The scale here goes up to 50 and we can see numbers in the 60s there. So ridiculous amounts of rain would be falling within this system. Again, it will be on the very extreme end of the models and ensembles, but it can't be discounted because it is a run that's been produced today. Now, to finish by looking at the ensembles, you can see very hot at the moment, but trending towards average and hovering around average over the next few weeks. Precipitation around, but also plenty of dry conditions, so really not too bad. If you compare it to the ECMWF, broadly very similar, lots of up and downs, some warmer days, potentially even later towards the week, uh, the weekend, said with that warmer push of south southwesterly winds for a time within a warmer sector. Up and down, I said with the precipitation, maybe some rain as well. And if we do have a look at those two meter temperatures hovering around the low twenties, not too bad. But look at the sea level pressure. You can't see anything too bad. But look in the long race, there are some very deep runs, which does suggest the possibility of those North Atlantic hurricanes making an influence. We'll have to wait and see, but for the time being, westy flow, cooler, some unsettled conditions, but I did just want to bring that to your attention because that could throw a real spanner in the works for the second half of the month. We could see some really quite stormy systems developing if that did come off. As I said, we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.